Yeah, his his enthusiasm was what came across more than anything else, and his knowledge of it, of the, of, just his knowledge of the whole event and and what he saw. When he went down, and he tells a story of, or someone else told me the story. When he went down, on one of the dives to the uh, to the wreck, um, he he said, right, I, I want to go to the left. It was with a, a French crew, I think they were. There was Russians and, and the French, they were, they were both doing it. And he said, oh, I want to go off to the left. And they said, no, no, we, we should go off to the right. They said, no, no, I, I, I know where we are, we'll go to the left. And, and they went to the left, and that's where, they, the guy thought they were on the other side of the ship, but Jim knew exactly where they were. And if you go to the left, that's when you come to the wheelhouse and they were there and all, whatever he was looking for. And, and afterwards they asked him, and he said, there's a little break in the rail and I knew because of that, that's where we were, because of that little break in the rail. I mean, you know, phenomenal. All the music shops played it, stores played it all the time. And that music just hit you. It was just, it was, it was a lot to do with the music. That, those songs, Celine Dion singing those songs, just really got to you. There were, there were it was a, another piece of his genius, Jim's genius, that he actually got a fellow Canadian to sing it, you know, to sing those songs. Because that became, it be, that became the attraction in a way. That, that alerted you to the film. You, the film never left, left your consciousness. You, you, could, you were aware of it all the time because you could hear it everywhere. You'd be sitting next to people on the bus and they'd be humming it, you know.